<laughs> it's it's so interesting now, like to, uh, talking to you and listening to you explain these things. I just I'm just going back to my school days when we studied uh, like videos and, and and films, and I think we did strictly ballroom in my year. And and at the time, I was like thinking, it's so stupid. Why is our teacher teaching us about studying a mo- movie? They, there's not there's, surely there's not all these things she's talking about to it. You know, but now, like, like you know, now obviously I'm, I'm like aware of that. But at the time, I was like, more to it. So, yeah. But now there's more to it, of course. Yeah, so much more to it. Just listening to you. Look, I mean, I, I, I can only imagine what your strictly boring uh, <laughs> lesson must be <laughs> like. I, I, I remember those same lessons, and they are stupid. They're stupid at this level. People, you can take a movie and, and, and put any meaning you want on it. You can say, oh, you know, what they really meant to that scene is this kind of weird kind of interpretation, shall we say. And that stuff I resist because I think what you really got to ask, the only real question to ask is what, did the, what, is, what does the filmmaker mean? What, what was the filmmaker trying to communicate to you through the scene? And great filmmakers try and communicate a lot of different things to you, not just the content of the scene, there's subtext, there's symbolism, there's you know, every little thing you do in a movie, from how you light it to whether it's a, it's a close-up, whether we're this close or this close or this close or this close, all has a different emotional sensibility that it's, it's going to affect you in different ways. And, be, and I can tell you, being a filmmaker, every single angle, every moment, every, every word, um, every image is carefully selected and they're, and they're carefully selected in a certain order to have an emotional effect on you. And it goes deep. You're asking it at, at, at lots of different levels. And great filmmakers succeed on all those different levels. So you can get into deeply analyzing a film, which becomes very psychological. Um, and there's a reason why films are the greatest art form of the 20th century, though that may have been superseded now by social media. Um, it's because they talk deeply to the psychology of what it is to be alive at a, at a, at a human level, at a ridiculously human level, <laughs> at a cultural level. Um, and, and then, of course, there's just the story, you know, a fun story and you eat your popcorn and go, hey, I forgot about that. Well, you know, the moment you get to the cinema. But actually, when you get into an analytical mode, even if you're looking at just an action, blah, blah, you know, popcorn movie, um, there is a lot of sophistication that goes into it, way more than you would ever imagine. Yeah. It's interesting. Like I was listening to this guy speak the other day about um, the psychology, as you were mentioning, and and humans, right? Human nature and the psychology, the deeper animal brain within us all. W- yeah. When you, for example, on TV have like an, a close up or extreme close up of someone's face and their eyes, that is something that you very rarely see in normal day to day yeah. interaction. You can see that person's pupils and that, you know, like, yeah. and it's quite, it's like super moving. That's why, that's why you can be be transported into another world when, you, yeah, when you're yeah, watching yeah. a movie, which is quite amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, look, not only do you never see that in real life, you then take that and then you, you enlarge it to a huge yeah. screen. <laughs> eyes, but like, each eye is like three, four meters yeah. high. You know? <laughs> so, so that is an unbelievable effect. I, you know, when movies first yeah. came out, that was very upsetting to people to suddenly be sort of thrown in their faces, literally. Um, these worlds you know we have one lens through which we see the world and it's quite a it's quite a wide cinemascopic lens if you just look forward you can just see that this is and this and, you, and this is the only lens you'll ever see the world in yeah. so you were recently uh, the director of a, a sort of a big hollywood action movie yeah. called hunter killer which starred gerard butler and gary oldman as you mentioned earlier um, but leading up to the film the um the U.S. Navy took you and Gerard sort of underway for three days on a nuclear sub- submarine, as far as I understand. Yes. Um, what was that like? Mad. <laughs> mad. I mean, nobody runs something more efficiently than the American military. <clears throat> so it was such an interesting thing for me to, to experience the American military firsthand. So I arrive in Pearl Harbor, which is the most secure military base in the world. Um, if you think about it, there are 12, I think there are 18 nuclear reactors in Pearl Harbor at any one time. Because all the submarines are nuclear reactors and all the aircraft carriers are nuclear reactors. Wow. At any one time, there's 18 of them parked and the rest of them are at sea. So it's, it's the most nuclear uh, active place in the world um, and the most secure in the world. Uh, and I, I was going to go on, one, on the most classified machine in the whole of the American Army. Navy, the submarines, the most classified. 
because they are the one war machine you can deploy without the enemy knowing you've deployed it. Hmm. Um, because it's under war, you can't see it, can't be detected. And so they go to great lengths to, to keep everything on the submarine secret, how it works, what it looks like, everything about it is, is, is classified information. And so to get onto a submarine is no small thing as a movie maker, as, a, as someone who's, oh, what should I show it to the world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of reverse thing. But the American Navy have a problem. And the, and the one problem is they cannot get people to sign up for the, for the submarine corps. This is the least glamorous and most secretive thing yeah. to go about it. Oh. You're not out on an aircraft carrier with, with the horizon in this little <laughs> claustrophobic coffin <laughs> bomb. <laughs> um, so they have that problem. And also this sort of transparency, you know, it's like people, this, the world is showing each other more of themselves and, and, and they're kind of open to that and they can see how it works well with their allies and even with their enemies to just show them a bit about what they're doing. So they have these two agendas and, and, and they see they, they, have, they also have a, a military wing whose job it is to put their machines into movies for these two reasons. So the Navy wanted to make a movie about the latest Virginia class nuclear submarines, a brand new three story high, 150 meter long submarine. Wow. It doesn't have a periscope. There are no periscopes. The old periscope, you remember from the movie that doesn't yeah. have, it's all electronic. Um, it's still a nuclear reactor, so, which is still very sensitive. Um, and they wanted to put that in the movie and demonstrate it to the world and to get people to want to be crew for those machines. Wow. And so they invited us to Pearl Harbor to, to give us the experience. Um, the script had been written. I, I came on board after the script had been done. The script had been written with the Navy, uh, uh, together with the Navy. Um, and so they were very behind and they were backing it. And they wanted it to be authentic and real as possible. And in order to do that, they put us on the submarine. And they took us underway for three days. Um, and they actually ran the drills of the script. So each thing that happened in the script, they would run it on, as though it was happening on the actual submarines, the little wow. submarine drills. You can actually shoot torpedoes, but not real torpedoes. They shoot water slugs. So they fill the torpedo tube with water. No ways. Shoot that water slug and it shoots and sounds and ice was wow. exactly like a real torpedo. Um, and they ran the drills underwater for us, which was amazing. Wow. Um, and then we got to meet the crew and hang out to them. There's no cell phone signal down there. So there's no cell phones, no laptops. There's no communication with the outside world. They purposely are uncommunicable with, so there's no, you can't talk back to Washington when you're in a submarine, you're alone in this thing. Wow. Um, and it's only when they surface, and they don't surface because that's when they can be seen by enemies. So, they sound. so a submarine captain to this day is the only autonomous war captain in the world. So submarine captains are operating autonomously. They do not communicate with Washington. They, they get a mission, they wow. go out and they do it. Um, so it's a very unique world to live in, and a very dangerous world. Because again, there are no portals, obviously, so it's all done with sonar, and they all listen. And anything, like an underwater cliff can just come out of nowhere. And you've got to, the sonar guy's got to see it, know what it is, to just to listen. And there's no active sonar either. They're not pinging. They're not going ping and returning the ping, yeah. because that game gives away your position. So they just listen to the noises in, in the water. Just from the noises, they're able to work out the whole topography. And then they can not only navigate, they can chase others. Wow. Um, so it's just an incredible piece of kit. Uh, so that was just amazing to go down and be in this very, and when you're in there, it's incredible because it's, it's not made for it to be beautiful. It's not made to be a Maserati, you know, it's an industrial <laughs> machine. You know? every, people need a screen, they're just like, we need a screen here. So they screw, stick a screen. Oh, we need a box here, screw, stick a box here. So it's just boxes and screens, just like the art and girders and bars. And it's just not it's sort of beautiful, but it is beautiful in its own way. Um, and so just, just seeing all of this, and I knew that I had to, it was so complex, I knew I could never build a set that was even remotely as decent as a real submarine. So I, 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 we had to build some sets, obviously, film in a real sub. Um, but I, I, felt I had one day filming in the real submarine, and I had to intercut that with my set, so I had to look exactly like a real submarine. So that was oh, the goal, wow. to build the set so that I could intercut them with a real sub. Huh. What all a challenge. was born of that three-day trip. It's amazing. Wow. Chief is so interesting, isn't it? It's just once you go into all these other worlds. Um, yeah. Must have been scary. Was Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour, and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold Mountain.